All right, so today I thought we'd be working on this fine piece of wood, whatever it may be. It's got some good heft to it, solid piece of wood. So I know it's not pine. I'm thinking possibly eucalyptus. As you can see, we've got a bunch of cracks. And I've taken a bit of time to fill them all up with super glue, both light or clear and dark black to hold it all together, keep the uh, keep it from, from cracking further. So let's proceed to make this thing round and see how it does. Grab my bowl gouge, freshly sharpened. Maybe I can bump it up a little bit in speed. Let's find out. I'll make cutting along it a little smoother as the edges that you're cutting will come around all the quicker. Almost there. You see my glue hasn't gotten down quite far enough, but we can fix that when we get a little closer to our final shape. Alright, move up a little higher. Get rid of these flat spots, and then I think it'll probably be a good time to sharpen my chisel. Better, better. Got some nice color in the grain there too. I like that. Now, the way it's cutting, whether flat or not, I think it's time to sharpen the bowl gap. So, if you excuse me, I'll put edge on this and I'll be right back. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get a good push cut in this. That'll certainly reduce the tear out. Hey, that is one dense piece of wood. <laughs> Dulled it up already. Alrighty then. So you better sharpen again. Well, I guess I'd call it sharp now. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright, so I added a little super glue to the cracks that I see to kind of keep them from getting larger. Sealing the wood up a little bit. Hopefully, now that I've sharpened my bowl gouge, It'll cut a little better but this wood is incredibly hard it's been making more sawdust than shavings and that's not what I'm accustomed to so 
I'm going to put my face mask on. I wear this pretty much all day at work. I kind of like to take it off when I get home, but better safe than sorry. So, here we go. Right, look at this. This is what's coming off of that. Sawdust. That's ridiculous. I'm going to have to get the carbide tool. Well, we're finally getting somewhere. Prefer the uh, bowl gouge; it makes a much smoother cut, and this has a lot of a uh, lot of tear out in it. At least we're making cuts now. Some of the cracks on the inside, a couple of them are pretty good size now. So I think I'll do like a super glue fill, and then sand it in the morning. Black is medium thick, and uh, for the larger cracks, I can get that in in the crack, and it looks kind of nice. When you finally finished up the bowl, to have this black spider web effect. For the much finer cracks, I'll be using a clear super glue because it's in thin, and it can get down in those little holes. Probably have to make another light pass over this when I'm done to get rid of a lot of these black stains. That's why I like to do it before I cut it. And I got 90% of it. Just less. This last little bit. Who knows? Might go all the way, all the way through. A nice generous portion on there and bloop, right in it goes. I don't know how deep that hole is, but it just keeps holding more and more. Did we reach the end? Maybe I filled the thing. All right, I'll call it good. May as well just go for it. Now, as you can see, super glue is not the instant glue everybody thinks it is. But this accelerator <clears throat> will, in a word, accelerate the curing time. You can watch the chemical process happen. And it glazes over. Pretty cool. That was a good one. So I got all the cracks filled. Decided I gotta clean up the bottom just a little bit before I'm finalized with this outside of it. Uh, so we'll do that and then we'll sand and flip it around. So when shaping the bottom of the bowl, you want it 
slightly convex, so the bowl rests on the rim. That gives it a more stable base. For the tenon, you want it angled in slightly with a better grip on the jaws of the chuck on the other side. Keep a good wipe down and we'll put some finish on it. Today I'll be using tried and true. Pretty easy to apply, you just rub it on and wait and wipe it up. Instructions say apply a very thin coat. Doesn't take much. Let that set for a while, then rub it off. Put on another coat, same thing. That green, it's got really nice color. Browns and reds and yellows, very nice. Hopefully get a bit of a shine out of it. That's how I applied a second finish off camera. And it bleeds, uh, bleeds out a little bit on the following day. Uh, my computer died yesterday, so I didn't really have a chance to work on this. I was trying to work on that. To no avail, unfortunately. Death by Windows Update. I was looking at this tenon, and I think it's a little deep to, to fit in my chuck. So I'm going to cut it down just a little bit, and then we'll get this thing flipped around. Heard a cracking sound. Time to stop. So I'm going to do a little something different this time, for me at least. I'm going to drill out the center of this bowl since it's so dense and there's so much of it. I thought that might speed things along a little bit. So I'm going to attach my Jacob's chuck and I've got three different Forstner bits to use. And the beats. I just got this in the mail. It was on sale. Hopefully it's a good... Uh, good bit and I'm kind of wanting to try it out anyway so this is my chance let's see how it goes Oh, this beak bit is a beast. I wish I had an intermediate size. I'd rather do another slightly larger hole. Oh, there goes the dog. But this one I'll have to do. When you get things on clearance, you can't be as picky. I've still removed less than half of the inside of this bowl. That's what carbide tools are for.
Well, guess we know what that cracking sound was about. Hopefully there's enough left in the bottom of the bowl to put a mortise in it. I think I can get this mounted in some cold jaws and use one of my, my Forstner bit here. This makes a nice indentation that fits well. We'll give it a try. That seems to have removed the damage. Now I have to deal with the tear out again like I did the first time I cut it. Light cuts. I'm going super slow, keeping that angle, barely touching the tool to the surface. That plus the slightly higher speed um, tends to lessen the, the tear out a little bit more and maybe I'll be within sanding range. That's the worst of it so far. Overall, much better. I'm also angling the tool instead of taking it straight on. I'm angling it back as it touches the surface. Trying to move the tool as I flow around the shape I've got. Barely cutting. The more pressure you put on it, the more that tear out is going to occur. I'm having such a hard time with this, I've got a crazy idea. I'm going to try the bowl gouge again. At least it's sharp, maybe it'll cut. Pretty sure this has moved overnight, which is why it's kind of bouncing, especially when I get towards the rim. It's a little challenging. We'll see what we can do. Since the overall mass is so much less now, I think I can bump it up one notch in speed, help with that bouncing a little bit, take a couple more light cuts, smooth things out, hopefully not too much tear out. And we'll get to sanding after that.
sanded the 320. I figured as dense as this wood was, it would take a 320 sand. And it seems to have been baked and fine. So now, just apply a little finish and we'll be done. Okay, let that soak in for an hour and I'll buff it off. Apply another coat tomorrow. I'll call it done.